Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's definitely homebrew time. This one is a radio receiver. And this a radio receiver here is for the amateur radio band the 80 meter band you can see the the scale here says exactly where you're tuned and it's built by OZ7 Hotel X-Ray his name is Moons I'm gonna show you what I found inside this unit in a second but first let's inspect the inside oh, this is definitely some cool cool homebrew most of the stuff here is reused taken from something else and then brought back to life and that will be the output audio amplifier and here we go phones or loudspeaker output and all the tubes are there the guy who did this one moans he built this one in 1954 he was 14 years old when he built this one so you gotta be a little bit impressed you can imagine back in 1954 without a lot of really really cool instruments making this one and getting it to work would have been a thousand hour hobby project inside the unit i find this note it was carefully folded together and this is the entire story about this radio receiver and i think that is really really cute let me try and uh, explain or translate this he powered this up this old um 80 meter receiver and here's the date 1998 he trimmed it uh, on the scale and it was a little bit too low only 5 to 10 kilohertz too low uh, sensitivity was usable but the product detector for lower side band was was really bad uh, the sound quality was really bad the receiver is built on Bella Vinta whatever that Bella Vista maybe it is I don't understand what that is in 1954 40 14 years old by me and it was rebuilt in 1960 and he made more than thousands of connections with this especially on morse code and here is his uh, very 73s oh set seven hotel x-ray moans so thank you very much moans for leaving this uh, story inside the unit i think that is super super cool when people do that and that means i know a lot more about what is going on here so far i can see that this is uh, obviously the master tuner and i like this this is of course tuning everything here is written on the front what is stuff is doing so that will be tuning that will be lf of course so this is the audio frequency band hf that is the frequency band you're receiving here is a tuning for the antenna and that is uh, of course between loudspeaker or headphones i don't know or avc is that audio voltage control i don't know exactly what that is and uh, here is some um, uh, so this is of course the the beat oscillator where you adjust for that you got am or cv modulation and that is the medium frequency tuning for that and that will 
maybe give you the tone. <laughs> I like this, uh, the, the wood here and uh, the way that it's made to look nice. So there's a magic eye for tuning. There isn't any mains transformer here, so I suppose... So this connector here, that is probably power supply connection, right? So here's what, what he did. He added those three wires uh, back in 98 and uh, powered it up somehow. I don't know yet what is going where, but I'm going to figure that out, I hope. Could be, could be fun and see if I could power something up here. There's a crystal that is missing, so I don't know what frequency that is. Probably around 3 megahertz, and uh, that will give us the IF uh, frequency we need. Oh, we got some wires here that's not soldered. Yeah, we're probably not going to power this uh, up or get it, get anything out of it. It looks a little bit funny here with that tube there. It looks like that is the voltage regulator. So why do we have a voltage regulator here? That is a little bit spooky, isn't it? Is that the right tube in the right socket, that one? See, that is the voltage regulator. Yeah, that is something I need to uh, inspect a little bit. I think it should be fairly easy to figure out how to uh, power it up uh, with filament voltage and with uh, anode voltage. <laughs> that one is quite cute. What exactly is that? That is a that is another knob that is made for the mechanical interface for the tuning. Uh huh. And that is the hole for the wire. I mean, yeah, okay, you can see it is definitely made by a dude that was 14 years old. And I totally love it. This is very, very impressive. In 1954, by a 14 year old, I mean, it is impressive. And that is such a good hobby to play around with electronics and working and working with this until something works. Man, you gotta be impressed. And that one, yes, that is the tuning for that. So there's another oscillator here. Yeah, that's quite cute. <laughs> I'm really happy about this, this uh, score. Uh, I think it's gonna be fun to see if I can get something out of this but other than that if i cannot at least we can sh can enjoy this video enjoy how this one was built i don't know if i understand the bend that was made here and that is ah so here is if going through this and it just goes over here right and this voltage regulator is just here by coincidence. It's not really doing anything with the signals here. See, it's not connected to anything. Uh huh. Uh, that was easy. I was of course able to trace all the filaments back to the green and blue wire and the, the black one here is just ground and then there are many wires uh, that goes to a certain point and uh, that is the anode supply so definitely I'm gonna go and try and power it up tomorrow but it's getting a little bit late now I just wanted to see that I got filament in all the all the tubes and I think uh, that is achieved I don't know about I can of course take my 
thermal camera and just let it run for a little while here and see if if we are lucky. I think I got light in all the lamps. Oh, there was there were a few of them that didn't light up in the filaments due to uh, bad contacts. So I had to massage the tubes a little bit around and uh, some of them are really, really hard to see. I think, yes, I can see the filament and uh, there's actually another trick. It's just to take a thermal camera and then verify real fast and real easy. Let me do it like this, then you can see what I'm doing. And then you'll see that they all light up real nice. And like you see here, this power pen toad, that is the uh, audio output amplifier. And that one runs very, very hot. And this is very typical for tubes like that. And uh, yes, we also got the good oldie down here is also warm. And the magic eye is working. We got some, yeah, this is, this is actually a classic uh, for thermal camera. Can you see that tube here in the middle of the screen? See, there's nothing here. But you can actually see the ref reflection a little bit. And that is because there's another one hidden down here. So, but it's hard to see it from, from the top. So yes, filaments okay. And uh, I can actually just crank up the anode supply until I see the voltage regulator turn on. So um, that is uh, how it should be. There should be an external power supply and it only consists uh, of a, a transformer and a rectifier for the, for the anode. And uh, that is uh, how it was uh, connected. So I've been trying to investigate a little bit more about what is going on inside this fantastic receiver project here. And I don't know if you can see all those different colors of uh, wires all over the place. It is a um, mess to say. <laughs> to say. Um, so here's what I've done. I've taken a permanent marker and I've been adding red stripes on anode supply and black permanent marker on everything that is ground. So it's easy just to follow those wires around here. This one actually looks like a black, but that is a red stripe on top of that green wire here. See this point here is my anode supply input and you can actually see that we got an anode resistor to to this tube system. We got an anode supplied to this somehow. I think this goes through here and I don't understand why exactly we need anode supply. So this is a filter and we got capacitors and stuff. So what is that doing anything good for? And that is uh, probably feeding anode supply through the through the coax to something else, right? And then again here is another tube. And this is of course its anode supply. Oh, look at the ground wires here. I mean it's... so this is the voltage reference... Uh, voltage reference tube. And... Uh, yeah, some more ground wires, some more anode supply. Oh, you gotta love this. Look at that, the thin green and yellow wire for earth. One of them is ground and the other one is anode supply. So there's just no rules whatsoever about colors for anything. And um, so I'm very sure about all this uh, power this and power that and uh, where are we having grounds and all that but but look at this this is the oscillator uh, this is the um, I think you call it a BFO so this one is mixed with the with the first IF and creates an audio for for SSB but here is the anode wire and there's nothing connected to that one 
So, this is the capacitor, a local decoupling capacitor. And there's a discharge resistor. And then there's an anode resistor here. So I think there's supposed to be perhaps a little inductor here or a little local resistor. And that has been removed for some reason. Uh, so this uh, circuit here is disabled. So that means SSB is not working, but AM is probably working. At least this is my theory. We're gonna we're gonna check that this out. And then this is the the crystal oscillator to create the first IF, and that crystal is missing. So what I think I want to do is well, first of, of all, I'm gonna try and put in some anode supply and see if uh, there's light in the in the magic eye and uh, stuff like that. And here is the antenna input ground and antenna input there's a little local filter here for the antenna signal and then there is a an amplifier for the antenna signal and here is the the tuning that's uh, done quite uh, nice right with this uh, wire and all that stuff and there's another little oscillator right next to it maybe that is the mixer mixer tube because, aha, look at that. Here is the oscillator. And then there's a coax and a filter to create a very clean injection. And then this goes to the next tube. So here we go. Here is your mixed signal somehow, right? Aha. Uh -huh. So where's the output from this one going? I don't know yet. But it's actually quite funny to see if, if I'm able to figure this out. I got a little wire here. Or is this just a hair? Well, I don't know exactly what that is. A thin wire, yeah. So I got my good old HP supply and that will be able to do both uh, the filaments and the high voltage. Uh, this thing actually uses quite a lot of uh, filament. I think it's like three and a half amps. So I need to uh, connect my, my filament supply in uh, parallel. And that is actually not that easy. You need to think a little bit about it before you do that. So uh, yeah, and I will solder on my little anode supply wire and then uh, let's see what happens. Well, I'm actually powering this up both with high voltage and low voltage. And I don't know if you can see this, but the magic eye is a live. Got the filament on high voltage, a little speaker and uh, anode supply 160 volts and the reason I know this is enough because the voltage regulator is lit so that is great I just turned it on and just kept the voltage exactly there and uh, now I'll see if I can make it say anything or do anything or is there any this one I know there's no response because there's no anode supply on that one <laughs> <laughs> when I flip that switch, look at that. So that is definitely doing some stuff. <laughs> but I'm actually happy about that we see a little bit of light here. That's not too bad. I don't hear anything. In the speaker, no. So this is... I definitely need this uh, injection oscillator to do something and I also need uh, voltage to uh, the BFO. That's definitely what's causing the, the problems here. So look at this, 3.7 megahertz. So this is, uh, no, 5.7. So this is my injection. I just put in a crystal here into this uh, crystal oscillator. And yes, of course it is uh, running. And now I got injection and all that kind of stuff. And I try to put in an anode. Oh, let's turn off the, the high voltage here so it's not causing any kind of sparks. So here's my anode supply. And that is the missing resistor that went to that point. And here's this capacitor. This system here is shorted. And I think it's the capacitor actually. 
Because what else can it really be? There is there isn't really anything here, right? This is a high value resistor that goes to the anode, and I think that one is okay. So I think I'll try and remove this uh, capacitor and see if this uh, oscillator is then up and running. I think I give up. I spent like two days poking around with this to see if I can get anything up and running. So I actually just ended playing around with the EM34. And those are always a lot of fun to play with. Inside the, the tuner, it's all brass, this capacitor. So that's really cute. Anyway, I think I will end this uh, video. At least we had a little bit of uh, fun so far. And I hope you were a, a little bit entertained. And please come again soon. Maybe I will find some other funky stuff and play with.